Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to my show on Buzz E TV. Morwenny maneni na manene kazi. Abantu abase monte di kwenye sekele ukuba ni afana nam si songe si funa ukuba uzolani las bontete makapume lele galimpela beki. Good day once again. Welcome to the show. We are going to be concentrating on the World Boxing Super Series where the first round of abandonment quarterfinals have kicked off. Now we have a monster in Naui destroying uh, Juan Carlos Payano in, uh, in his native Japan, knocking him out in the first round on the floor. That's all she had. And now the second bout of the uh, quarterfinals takes place this Saturday in uh, uh, Katarinburg in Russia, where now own Zolani Lars Bontete defends his WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World against Mikhail Aluyan. Now, this World Boxing Super Series is something that I'm very excited about. Being a fight fan is sometimes like dating in your late 30s or 40s, where you get the crazies, you get the gold diggers, uh, you get the broken ones. It's full of false starts and stops, and just when you think you've got it right, things fall apart. That's what boxing is sometimes like. You know, we don't get the best fights made that we want. Sometimes the best don't fight the best. But this is like discovering your dream woman and your, or your dream man late in life and you're thinking, where have you been all my life? And this is what the World Boxing Super Series represents. It's what us, us boxing fans always wanted and never thought we were going to get. Champions fighting champions, the best fighting the best. Now, uh, Tete, as I say, is fighting the dark horse of a, a bantamweight super series. He's fighting Mikhail Aloyan, who's only, who only has four pro fights. He won them all, uh, all four against Nicaraguan opponents. What's up about that? I'm not sure. But uh, mid level, okay, good opponents, but not really world beaters. And he didn't knock him out, he, and he didn't win easily as well. His last two fights were split decisions, so he had to work hard for it. So, what is Mikhail Aloyan doing on this level at all? One might ask. Um, it's a good question. He is part of a growing trend of star amateur fighters. They want to turn that stardom to a professional ranks as quickly as they can. Now, for some guys like uh, Naoya Inoue, his countryman Kosei Tanaka, or especially uh, Vasil Lomachenko, that works. For others like Muhammad Wasim, as we recently seen against uh, our own Murutin Talane, and um, what, uh, the, 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 the Irish guy, um, Paddy Barnes, against Christopher Rosales, it didn't work so well for them. So, in which category will Arayan fall? Now, I've done a bit of a study on Aloyan. <coughs> He's a very, very awkward customer. He has two different styles. He, there's a, one part of him that goes that, that's usually there in the first half of a fight, and then there's another part of him that comes out in the second half. He likes, he's a bit like Omar Narvaez, uh, Tete's last opponent. He likes to run around the ring, dashing quickly. He's got quick feet, uh, comes in quickly from angle, lands two or three shots, and gets out again. So it's always changing direction. He's very tricky, very awkward. And then in the second half of a fight, I think he gets comfortable with his opponent's level of power. And then he comes forward. Then he starts fighting aggressively and he, and he bangs the head and body. He stands there with his gloves held high and he changes direction. He steps around his opponent. And that is what uh, Mikhail Aloyan does. Um, he doesn't, he is very awkward. And he, he, I don't think he's got the kind of, how do you, power to really trouble Tete. Tete hasn't got an anvil fortune, he can be stopped, uh, he can be knocked down, um, but I don't see that Mikhail Aloyan can really trouble him in the power department. So the only way I can see Aloyan winning this thing is to keep neutralizing Tete, hit and run and steal rounds and win a boring decision because let's remember he's in his own town. Now Zolani Tete on paper, it looks like an easy fight for him. He's got the reach advantage, he's got the height advantage. He's a far more experienced pro, but even having said that, we have to keep in mind Aloyan has gone 12 as a pro now. Um, you don't win two world championships and two Olympic medals if there's not something special about you. And there's a big uh, psychological thing here for Tete because he's been in against the best and he's done well. So. It might be that he'll be a little bit flat against Aloyan, thinking it's an easy fight. And he could be looking for that knockout and allow Aloyan to steal those close rounds and uh, keep chasing for a knockout that never comes. 
And uh, remember, uh, Arlo will be the house fighter in Russia, the World Boxing Super Series. We haven't had controversial scoring, luckily. So they're trying to keep it on the level. So I don't think that's going to happen, but he must be aware of that. I think uh, the banana peel here for Tete, where he could slip up, is to overlook Arlo and to look ahead against uh, the likes of Donari, Burnett, and uh, of course, Inoue. So that is the danger that he has. So he has to keep his focus for Arlo and I think what Tete must avoid is making the mistake of chasing Oleana around the ring uh, and wearing himself out. I think he should just claim that center of the ring, stay cool, calm and collected, and time uh, work for Jab when, when he can, and time Oleana every time he wants to come into him. Uh, if Oleana gets into his, his, his second half style, where he stands and he takes a few shots and he starts banging a bit, he took uppercuts against his previous opponents. If he wants to do that against Tete, it's a very bad idea. He's going to go home early. I can see that uppercut hook combination from Tete working. Aloyan is like Tete, a southpaw, but he can also fight almost as well in the orthodox style. I've seen him fight other southpaws when he changes to orthodox. So he might be coming as an orthodox fighter on uh, Saturday night. Even so, Tete has seen that style before. Um, uh, Aloyan has a bit of that Narvaez thing about him and Tete did not look good against Omar Narvaez. Narvaez wasn't there to win. Uh, he figured out quickly he's not, he, he's, he's not going to take any risks. He's just going to go the distance and cash his check. Now, so it is a bit of an, uh, uh, an, an awkward style for Tete, but as long as he keeps his composure and he, he picks his spot, spots, I'm sure he can beat Aloyan. So I'm going to go for Zolani Tete uh, to win this fight, it can happen two ways. It can go a boring decision where he lands with more punches and Arlean just cannot really get on the inside. Or Arlean can get bold, he can try and win, and that's when Tete, I think, will clip him because Tete doesn't like pressure. You can beat him with pressure, but uh, Arlean hasn't got to work right. He's not a guy who's going to stand in front of you and do that Mexican style swarming pressure. So, I'm thinking if I have to put my head down, I, I, I can't see Tete losing this, although I'm nervous about the fact that uh, psychologically he's going to have to psych himself up for this. Um, so I think Tete is going to nail Aloyan coming in with a good counter shot and he's going to finish him. So I'm predicting Zolane Tete is going to win this fight by knockout within six rounds. Um, that is that for our big fight. For the other fights, uh, we know next weekend it is. Uh, Emmanuel Rodriguez facing Jason Maloney, the IVF champion, Rodriguez from Puerto Rico, Maloney, uh, the, the guy from Australia, two unbeaten fighters. We're going to talk about that next week. That winner will go on to face the monster Naoya Inoue. Tete, if he doesn't slip on that proverbial banana peel on Saturday, will face the winner of Ryan Burnett and the veteran Monito Donari. We're also going to discuss that as it comes on. So let's hope... Uh, Last born is on point. Let's hope he makes us all sit up and cheer when he uh, sends Aloyan back in because we all want to, let's face it, we all want the final to end up between Zola Tete and Naoya Inoue. Well, that will be it for the weekend. Please send me all your comments, email me, tell me what you think. You can also fo uh, follow me on my own blog, www at couchpotatofightguru blogspot.com. I'm also a regular contributor to Ring Magazine, The Bible of Boxing. You can go to the blog there, www.ringtv.com. You can also subscribe to the digital edition of the magazine for $1.99. So that's it from me on Buzz ETV, and I hope to chat to you guys soon, and until then, keep up those gloves.